<laughs> anyway, without further ado, and to move right along, I'd like to introduce to you a dear friend, a great entertainer, and a guy that uh, is not actually wearing a jacket, he's got a problem. <laughs> Mr. Steve Rossi. still awake <laughs> and I'm extremely happy because this is the biggest crowd I've ever performed to in my life. <laughs> when I see a crowd like this I can just shit I'm telling you <laughs> it's amazing what's happening. And for some of you people <clears throat> who might not uh, recognize me from the legendary comedy team of Alan and Rossi, I just want you to know that I looked a lot better when I was alive. <laughs> Come on, folks, I need all the guys. <laughs> Anyhow, I came to, uh, to Palm Desert 51 years ago for arthritis. I finally got it. <laughs> and it was here in Palm Desert where I had sex for the first time in my life. She <laughs> 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 <It> was the <laughs> one. <laughs> I had sex for the first time. I remember I was very young. I was nervous. I was frightened. I was alone. I tried to be gentle, but it was hard. You know? I finally got a grip on myself. My Italian father walked in. He said, you know, Stevie, you keep it doing that, are you going to go blind? I said, Pop, I'm over here. <laughs> I said, why can't I just go to one of those places where you, where you just pay for it? He said, you must never do that because at your age, you, you might see something you should never expect it to see. So I went anyhow, and I, I saw something I never expected to see. I saw my father. I said, Pop, I'm over here. Anyhow, just before the show, this lovely couple came up to me. They had a camera. They recognized me, and they said, uh, Mr. Rossi, please, just one picture. And I said, certainly. I couldn't believe it. They handed me the camera. <laughs> I took their picture. And, but I didn't care because I never wanted to be a real big star. And so far, it's working out pretty good. <laughs> uh, just, I, I was talking about uh, Tim, Tim Barry uh, earlier. It was so nice to me. He, uh, he's very generous. He gave me the uh, key to the presidential suite at Motel 6. <laughs> you cheap bastard. <laughs> anyway, I walked into the living room and there were pictures of all the former presidents. And then uh, I walked into the bedroom and uh, I laid down on the bed. I looked up and there was a mirror over my bed. <laughs> with a sign that said, objects may appear to be bigger than they really are. <laughs> it's like I took a Cialis trip. <laughs> and to me, at my age, Cialis is like Disneyland. It's a four hour wait for a two minute ride. <laughs> Come on, folks, I need to get So, uh, my wife, my wife was here tonight, and uh, we were sitting at the bar just before the show, and uh, with this Irish buddy of mine. So the Irish guy says to the bartender, he says, uh, can I have an IW? Bartender said, what's that? He says, I uh, Irish whiskey. I figured, what the hell, I'm Italian. I said, give me a DR. He said, what's that? I said, Dago Red. My wife said, she knows. My wife said, can I have a 13? Bartender said, what the hell's a 13, lady? She said, seven and seven, stupid. <laughs> and on the other side of the bar was this young man with a multicolored mohawk. So I kept staring at him and he kept staring at me. He finally came over and he said, uh, sir, uh, did you ever uh, do anything strange or crazy like I'm doing when you were a young man? I said, yeah. Once I uh, made love to a peacock. <laughs> I thought you might be my son. 
That's another applause. Guys. <laughs> I met my wife at a, uh, a rodeo. She was a bull rider. <laughs> I married her because I figured any woman who thinks eight seconds is a long time to be. <laughs> She's a perfect wife. But actually, I met her on a blind date on the telephone. And we were talking, and she described herself, said her name was Carmen and that she was a tall, voluptuous blonde, and uh, she was wearing a white pantsuit. So I told her my name, Steve Rossi, and I invited her to dinner at my favorite gourmet restaurant, Denny's. <laughs> Eight o'clock that night, and she actually showed up, and uh, when she showed up, I, I said, uh, are you Karma? And she said, are you Steve Rossi? I said, yes. She said, then I'm not karma. <laughs> anyway, I said, my wife is a very quiet lady, never makes a sound. Last night I was in bed making passionate love. I said, honey, why are you so damn quiet? She said, because I'm in the bathroom. Baby. I said, stay there, I'm doing better without you. She got in bed. I said, honey, when I make love to you, who do you fantasize you're with? She said, Engelbert Humperdinck. I said, me too. I said, honey, can I do anything I want to do tonight with you? She said, yeah, as long as you don't wake me up. She's a great And I told her, I said, now that I'm 79 years old, when we make love, I want to be on the bottom. She bought me a bunk bed. <laughs> this had as great disciples as a bitch. But I got even with her. I bought her one of those strobe lights, you know, that flash. <laughs> and, you know, now when we make love, it actually looks like she's moving. <laughs> We're a good audience for people that are asleep. <laughs> She's a lousy cook. I said, you know, if you could cook, we could save a lot of money. We could fire the chef. She said, if you could screw, we could fire the chauffeur. <laughs> do, you, do you know that she had the nerve to call me a lousy cook? I said, honey, what about the night that I did it for, for uh, 12 hours and two minutes? She said, that was the night they turned the clock up an hour. <laughs> We were married in a nudist camp. I'll never forget the wedding ceremony. The minister had his clothes on and the wedding party was naked. So the minister said to my wife-to-be, he said, do you take this man to be your lawful wedded husband? She said, hell no. I'll take this one over here. <laughs> I looked down. I knew he was the best man. <laughs> I said, you know, pal, if I had that, I'd rule the world. He said, that ain't mine. I've lost the guy behind me. <laughs> and he was Paul Lincoln. And I'll never forget our honeymoon. And I remember I looked down at her, and in my best romantic voice, I said, sweetheart, am I the first one? She looked at me. She said, why does everybody ask me that? <laughs> Very good on this. I'm going to do another hour. <laughs> we went to the Medicare office to see if we qualified. And the lady clerk asked me to open up the buttons on my shirt. She saw the gray hairs on my chest. She said, you definitely qualified for Medicare. So I said, well, thank you very much. As we were leaving, my wife said, you know, it's lucky she didn't ask to see below your belt. I said, why? She said, you could have qualified for total disability. <laughs> right. I want to brag that last night three women were banging on my bedroom door. I finally let them out. <laughs> I have a oh, I know, I need a drink. Uh, can I have a sip? 
Incidentally, how about a nice round of applause for a wonderful actor and a dear friend of mine, Michael Dunn. Yeah. 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 First of all, do the best you can. Second, give them all you got. And third, and most important, they didn't come to see you in the first place. <laughs> Frank was such a sweet guy. <laughs> Anyhow, Marty and I did 44 Ed Sullivan shows of 33 times with the Beatles. Shimmer 
theater at the Hilton Hotel because we will be bringing the show to Broadway in April. And if he gets to Broadway, oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.